Hey designers, today I want to do a bit of a show and tell of one of the projects that I'm honestly most proud of having designed and built throughout my design career. So I'm really excited to walk you through the website that I designed and built for our I Am A Creator project at ConvertKit. I'll talk you through some of the design decisions that I made and show you some of the cool features of the build of the site in Webflow. I think it'll be fun. I'm really proud of this project. So let's get in and let me show it off to you. <laughs> So this site, like I said, is for our I Am A Creator project. That project is a coffee table book. It's also a short documentary film series. Basically it's us chronicling the stories of creators on their journey, of the struggles that they've overcome, the decisions that they've made on their journey. I'm really proud that as a company, we put resources and effort into something like this. And I was also really stoked to get to design and build a website to show it all off. I think it'll be over actually by the time this video goes out, but we've been running a giveaway uh, like promotion for the book. And that is what the homepage of this site was like focused on explaining, was explaining the giveaway and getting people to take part in it. So that was the like main brief that I was working to. It was designed in Figma, it was built in Webflow, and I actually streamed a lot of the design and build process. So I'm gonna leave links in the description to where you can go watch replays of those streams that I did. I streamed them over on Twitch. So if you're not following me on there, please go follow me on Twitch to catch future streams like this. Cause this was a fun project where I really did capture sort of like many points from the beginning right till the very end on a stream and, and had support of people along the way, which was cool. Anyway, let's get into talking about the design. So the sort of style guide for the design itself, a lot of the elements came from the book. So the book, and let me just scroll down to this page here. This is an actual screenshot of a page from the book print file. So you can see the book designer, Taylor Roy, she did a fantastic job, created the style with the thin lines and the, the all caps, the overlapping there, the, the line running down. I was trying to make the site fit in with the, the style that had already been established for the book. And so that's where a lot of the yeah design decisions came from, like this little menu here with the line up the side. We're treating this project as a thing ConvertKit is doing for the creator community rather than like a marketing thing for ConvertKit. And we didn't want ConvertKit to be the focus, we wanted the creators to be the focus of this project. So that's why I have up here a project by ConvertKit and a link back to our main site to learn more. But the rest of the site itself is sort of treated as its own entity. This was my first project that I really played around a lot with Webflow interactions. So as you can see here, if I reload, all this text like moves into place, which I thought was really cool. And let me show you a little bit how I did that. So I have here on page load, this home header content loads in animation starts. And what happens is each element is set as an initial state a little bit lower down than its final position and also 0% opacity. So I've got it with the heading, the, the paragraph, and then the um, small text below it as well. So we do that and then we move them into place into a zero Y position, turn on the opacity to hundred, offset the timing of them a little bit so that they wouldn't all happen at once as well, just by setting a delay. And I think it turned out really cool. It gives like a nice air of quality when you first load the page. Another cool thing that I was pleased to have figured out how to do is have this line here follow you down. So you can see on load that this line like grows down. And then as you scroll, the line continues in this section and follows you. My hope was that that would keep people scrolling on the page. So how this is done is it's actually two separate lines. You can't see this one in the build because I have it turned off on the start. But I have one line here that is just set to, it grows from a 0% height to 100% height. It's 100% of this div here. This is a grid. And there's a big long, I believe, yeah, lots of padding at the bottom there to make all the space for the line to follow down. And then it connects to this line here that is actually a completely separate line <laughs> in the bottom container. And again, this is just a div with a border on one side, a one pixel blue border, and it's set to be 100% height of the container that it's in. So that's how it's doing that. And then how I got it following you down the page, that is an interaction on this container. And it says that while the this container that has all this giveaway information is scrolling in view, we play this homepage line extends animation, which is essentially just it's starting from a 0% height and going to 100% height. 
And I just played around with the position of like, you know, the speed of it by dragging this around and it turned out that 5% and 80% looked right to me. I don't know. This is what I like about Webflow Interactions is that you can just sort of like drag and drop your experiments and like figure out how you want to do things from there. What else about this homepage? Okay, so we also have this here is a video that explains the giveaway because I know that not everyone likes to read information. Some people prefer to watch or listen to information instead. So you click this and it opens up in a modal, a video that explains it all. And I wanted to have this follow you down as you scroll down the page. And so that I did with just using position sticky, which sticks the element to the top of the container as soon as um, goes into view. That was a terrible explanation, but that's what position sticky is like kind of built for. It used to be a lot harder to do that in CSS, but they added that as an attribute, which is great. I also have an, an interaction on this bit here that I use. I use this on a bunch of different things, just a sort of a pre-made animation that when it scrolls into view, when this element comes into view, it slides in from the right. And I have that happening if I reload again for a few things like this here as well, these loading in. I just had fun with the little interactions like that. This bit here on the site goes into a bit more detail about how to nominate. And so I have a template for Instagram and a template for Twitter. With this one here, you push copy to a new tweet and it'll open up a, it's a click to tweet link, which is like a service where you can basically just create a link that does this. I don't know, I use it all the time for stuff like that. And then this side here, Instagram was a little bit harder. I have these images here that you could save when you're on your phone as well, it also works. And if you push copy caption, it copies to your clipboard. I'll just show you in this tweet example here. If we delete that and I push paste now, boom, my example is in there. So that was really fun to figure out. That did involve a little bit of JavaScript. I found a tutorial for how to do this that I just copied. It basically involved putting in this bit of script here. And then on the button itself, you need to put this data clipboard text attribute onto the link and it automatically copies whatever's in the value to the clipboard. So pretty simple, honestly, but I was stoked to have figured it out. <laughs> this cool interaction here, how these photos sort of are like sliding as you scroll, that is happening as a like continuous uh, while scrolling in view animation. So I have while scrolling in view, create a photos and they start out at 0% opacity and a little bit further down and then they get up to 100% and higher up on the page. So it's a similar idea of what I was doing for the content in the homepage header, but instead this is happening all the time. So you can sort of like roll back and forth between these two like points in the animation. On mobile, these are coming from the side. So I had that just do something slightly different. I have an animation on my book rotating as well, which is working the same way. It's while scrolling in view, the book is going from a 0% on the Z rotation to a minus 9% on the Z rotation. And it ends up being that you can sort of like see the book going back and forth just ever so slightly. For my menu up the top, I really wanted to have this bottom border sort of like slide along as you hover on the others, but that turned out to be a little too complex for me, but I was happy with where I ended up with this, see how it sort of looks like it emerges from the bottom. And that is just an interaction on the height of the border. If I come back in here, I believe I can show you that pretty easily. The border width is a transition, a CSS transition. And so that means that as you hover, it goes from a zero pixel border width to a six pixel border width. And that's why it does sort of like that growing animation, which is kind of cool. I made sure to add something interactive to most of the links. So see when you hover on the arrow, it sort of just moves to the side a little bit. Same for the play buttons. They like grow a little bit while the background is also changing opacity. I just think that makes it more, a little more interactive, you know, a little more fun. Another main page of the site was to tell people a bit more information about the book itself, because like, why would they want to participate in the giveaway? if they didn't understand that the book itself was a valuable object, right? So there was this book page that I made um, and this is using a background video, which is pretty easy to set up in Webflow. And uh, clicking this button here opens up the book trailer in a modal and that's using the light box element in Webflow. I have these loading in as you saw just then. This I used a CMS collection to set up all of our 
creators. So this is all the creators featured in the book. So setting them up in a CMS collection meant it was really easy for me to create this block here that displays them all because I just pull in a collection list. Let me show you what that's like in case you're interested. And then any changes that I made, like say, for example, if I wanted to make the font size bigger of this, I just change it here and it would change on all of them. Let's undo that though, because we don't want that to be a thing that happens. <laughs> I made sure on each of the sub pages to put a link back to the giveaway page as well. So yeah, there's this note here to help us give the book away for free. So you click that and you head back to the homepage to find out about the giveaway. And then we have the films page. This is again in the CMS collection. This is a pretty basic page. This is something I definitely see myself doing more with in the future. I think once the giveaway is over, a little bit in the future when there's time to get back to the site, I'll work on making the homepage a little bit more focused on the films, I think. But for now, they're just sitting in here on this page as a collection list because again, I put these into the CMS. So each time we publish a new film, I could actually set up a zap to go from our YouTube channel into here whenever a new film is posted to our playlist on YouTube. Let me give you a quick look of how the site is looking on mobile. So the same interactions and like load and animations happen on mobile. The menu looks a little bit different. The choice I decided to make with this was to have it drop down and be like on a blue background and have the thick border at the side instead of at the bottom. But yeah, things slide in. There is not the line following down the page here on this screen size because that meant the content was too constrained. So instead I just hoped that, you know, seeing the line extend at the start, you'd scroll more. And I think people naturally scroll more on mobile anyway. Yeah, you can use this, the copy and caption works on mobile as well, which is nice. And then, like I said, these sort of slide in like that. Our book still does its cute rotating thing. The book page on mobile, again, very similar, but the creators sort of load in in a line instead. And all of these are linked as well so that anyone who wants to learn more about a particular creator who was featured in the book can easily do so. Down the bottom on every page, you might've noticed this cause it's on the desktop as well. We have this opt-in in the footer, sort of encourages people to take the next step on their journey. And this is a, like a pack of wallpapers, a journaling sheet, just like some inspiring stuff to help you kickstart your journey. And so this is a ConvertKit form naturally that delivers that. And how I embed a ConvertKit form in Webflow is through uh, an HTML embed element. So you just paste the JavaScript code in there. Um, and you can't see the form until the site is published either to the staging or the live site. But um, yeah, that's how it works to get ConvertKit form into Webflow. I used a symbol for the footer so that if I wanted to make a change to it, it'll automatically update across all of the pages on my site. This little promo block here that appears on the film page and on the book page, I also made into a symbol because um, again, it wanted to be easy to keep it updated. And of course my navigation is also a symbol, including this bit up here. I think that's all I have to show you. I don't know, if you've got any more questions about the build of this site, please feel free to let me know. Oh yeah, you could scroll through these examples as well. Yeah, I would love to hear what other questions you have about this project, if there's anything I can answer for you. But also, like I said, I did stream the whole thing. So I'll leave links if you wanna go and watch that. And there was also a video that I uploaded just a week or so ago about the initial stages of the build. It's sort of like a cut down version of one of my streams. I'll link that on a card if you wanna go and watch that. This was a fun project. I'm looking forward to making more micro sites like this as we at ConvertKit make more cool projects like this for the creator community. And of course, I will look forward to documenting it all for you and like showing you the process on YouTube as well. So thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed seeing some of my thought process about the website and I'll see you in my next video.